Hey everybody, so this is going to be lesson two um, as we move forward towards creating the shipping container. Um, as you can see from lesson one, we've already created the rectangle, so we're good to go on that end. And now we need to start turning it into something that looks a little bit more like a shipping container. So we're going to start with these walls um, on either side of our shipping container. If you go to Google Classroom, I spelled corrugated wrong there, but you can see that I've uploaded a document. Um, I basically estimated what the dimensions were for this piece right here, and this is what I came up with. We're going to do one foot sections because 40 feet is obviously easy, easily divisible by one, and then we're just going to keep that one unit and use that to create our shape. So as you can see from here to here, that's one inch. From here to here, that's one inch. And then I moved from this spot to this spot over one inch to create my diagonal. After that, I went through and I deleted all those extra lines. And then I'll show you how to do that <clears throat> in person with SketchUp. So we already know if we measure from here to here, that's 40 feet. So you want to make sure that your dimensions are right to begin with, starting there. Um, I've moused over that corner, and then you can see a dashed red line. And so I'm just going to start, and instead of trying to find one foot in space, I'm just going to type in one and apostrophe for foot. We're then going to replicate that over and over again. As you saw from earlier, we're then going to go out one inch on this side. And SketchUp defaults to inches. Um, you can go in and change that to meters or whatever you want. But here in the United States, um, it's going to default to inches. So if I just type in one, it's going to assume that I'm talking about inches. I'll type in one again, and I'll close that square over there. Same thing over here. One inch, one inch, and close my square. OK, so now I want to make a diagonal. It's the same on this side as it is on this side. So I need to do a reference line again. I'm going to start at that corner that I've already made. One inch, enter. And now, I guess enter didn't work. I had to click. Now I know that the distance from there to there <coughs> excuse me, is one inch. And I can connect that for the diagonal shape. I'll do the same thing over here. One inch. Connect my diagonal shape. So this is the basic building block that we're going to use to create that <coughs> rib section of the side of the shipping container. From here, I'm going to go in and I'm going to select my arrow key and I'm going to delete all these unnecessary lines. You could also go in with the eraser key or eraser button, but for whatever reason, I don't like that one. So I normally just default to the arrow key, and then on my keyboard, I hit delete. Okay, so there's our basic building block. Let's do some simple math. We know this is 40 feet from here to here. If I copy, which is holding down, oh, I can't type it in, the control button, and then hitting C, that shape or whatever it is I selected, is now copied to the keyboard. If I hit Control V, it allows me to paste. And I'm going to paste to that endpoint right there. So I'm telling this where to place this in space. Quickly, Control C again, Control V. Although in this case, you don't have to Control C because you already have the same thing selected. So I'm just going to Control V again and Control V. All right, so now I have one, two, three, four, five of these sections. And I picked five because 40 is easily divisible by five. And now if I go in and I delete all of these lines, that's making my life a little bit easier. So now I'm working smarter, not harder. And I'm going to take the five that I've already made, Control-C again, Control-V, 
and paste that right there. So now we've got 10 of these sections. We also know that 40 is divisible by 10. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to delete this little piece right here because that's going to cause problems, which I'll show you later if you don't delete it. And then I'm going to go back, control C to copy, control V to paste. Delete that again. Zooming out, I can see that's now 20 pieces and 40 is also easily divisible by 20. Control C, Control V, and paste. So now, if I wanted to, I could go back to my measurement tool and I could measure just to make sure that from there to there is 40 feet. And that's shown down here. So I know that that's legit. Okay, so we've got one problem, this piece right here. But I'm going to pretend like I'm moving forward and I can't actually see that piece. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a shape that I can extrude. And extrude means basically use my push-pull command to bring it up. Okay. So I'm going to go here, red, I know, once again, is parallel to that red line right there. So to keep things organized, that's important. It doesn't matter how far back you go here, because we're going to delete that anyways. And then I just want to make sure that this is far enough past that point right there that I don't have to worry about it. Let's go back to my selection tool, go back to my pen tool. And then when I try to close the shape right here, you're going to notice that it doesn't turn blue. So that's the computer or program telling me something's wrong. I'm going to go in right here, delete that because we don't need it anymore. And I know that the issue is this piece right here. So if I delete that and I go back over here and redraw my line, now it should close the shape. And you can see that because it's turned blue. Another issue that I see that can cause problems is if you think you closed the shape, but you didn't quite close it. So if I draw my line really close, it's as close as it's going to get me. If I zoom out, it can look like it's a closed shape, but in reality, you know that it's not. So. Those are two potential problems that I see happen quite a bit. But for now, let's just close the shape. All right. This is good. Now I'm going to go over to my push-pull command, which is this one. Mouse over the shape that I want to push-pull, and you can see that those blue dots appear. Click on it, and now I can snap to my height. I'm going to orbit around, and I can see that we've created the shape. Then I'm going to select my piece right here, and the way you select is important in design software. If I select from right to left, notice that the <coughs> rectangle that I'm creating has dashed lines. That's going to select everything that was touching that rectangle that I made. But if I go from left to right, it's only going to select the things that are entirely inside of that rectangle. So you can use that strategically. In this case, it doesn't matter because I'm far enough away from that piece. I don't have to worry about selecting both at the same time. So I've got that selected. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make it a group. That means that I don't have to select each and every individual piece anytime I want to move that as a whole. If I explode, which basically undoes the group, now you can see that I'm selecting every single individual piece, which is not helpful when you're trying to move the whole assembly. So once again, select what I want, make group, and now I want to move this. I can go ahead and delete this face right here because I don't need it anymore. As you can see, it's hollow on the inside. And if I select my group here, I need to pick a point to move it from. If I go over here to my move command, if I pick a random point in space, like I'm doing with my cursor right here, 
it's always going to maintain the distance between where I clicked and the object that I'm trying to move. So where you click really matters. In this case, I'm trying to snap it to this corner right here, which is that. And I know that the start of my shape started at this point right here. So I'm going to click there to move it from. And bam. So now we have one of our walls made for our shipping container. If you zoom in, you can't really tell too much, but you can tell that there's a thickness of that wall. So we don't want that. So I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to select my group, and I'm going to explode it. Now I can go through and I can select every piece individually to get rid of all that extra junk that we don't necessarily want. If I zoom in or zoom down, I can also delete this line that was hidden, but it would also be visible if you looked at it from below. Okay, so now we're in a better position. But this is still kind of a mess because we can't all select it at the same time. So this is where that selecting from left to right slash right to left is going to be important. If I go from right to left, it's going to select all this extra stuff that I don't want. But if I go from left to right, I can isolate that piece right there, make it a group. And now anytime I click anywhere on this piece, it's going to select the entire thing. So from here, I'm going to control C to copy, control V to paste. I've already done all this work and I don't, necessarily want to do it all on this side. So I'm going to work smarter, not harder. We've already gone over the move command. And here I'm going to show you a subset of that, which is the rotate command. You can see that we've got the blue line here, the green line there, the red line there. So this is SketchUp trying to tell me, okay, in what direction do you want to rotate this thing? And I want to rotate it in the blue direction. If I go and I extend in the green direction right there, I know that it's going to work with my angle over here. So I'm just going to wait until that line turns green and then flip it all the way around until it's green again on that side. From here, I'm going to come over, delete this face right here, select this, go back to my move command, and remember, where you pick to move it from is super important. I'm going to click that corner right there and then move that over to that corner right there. So now we have the beginnings of our shipping container that's starting to look, oops, where's my tab at? A little bit more like a legit shipping container right here. And that's going to conclude lesson two. We'll move on to the next part in the next video.